Welcome to the My Basketball Podcast, also known as MLB Podcast, NBA Playoff Edition. I'm Evan. I'm Ja. And this is our basketball podcast. We recap, break down, and analyze players and teams in the playoffs from the previous games from the previous day. Ja, 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 Ja. Game one of the Eastern semifinals in the first game of the second round has happened last night. And... I mean, it was a big game. The Bucks. Well, I mean, it's playoffs every game, big game. But the Bucks yeah. and the Nets. You know, I was looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this entire series. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really exciting. See what the Bucks and the Nets are capable of. The Bucks specifically. And within a minute, James Harden gets hurt. Within a minute, within a minute, a little less than that. Yeah, he gets hurt. <laughs> Yeah. The same hamstring that has bothering been bothering him the entire season. I guess it's time for me to pick new champions, huh? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'll, well, I'll, I'll return back to that comment later on. Yeah. But, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, he missed a lot of time with his hamstring injury in the regular season. Yeah. Hopefully it's not severe now. You know, I want to see them all play. I mean, yeah. they all hyped up. Shit, let, let me see him play. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to see James Harden get hurt. Also, you know, they're trying to battle for a championship. He obviously wants to be there. He's never been to the finals, obviously, let him know having the championship on his belt. So, you know, I'm pretty sure he wants to be there. Yeah, he has been to the finals. Oh, yeah, in OKC. <laughs> Forgot. Um, but that that was so, seems like a that seems like a distant memory now. Yeah, that seems like it happened in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he didn't he didn't play for the rest of the game. He got hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, luckily for him, somebody else stepped up. Nope, go back. <laughs> luckily for him, somebody else stepped up in his place. That's that man right there. Is that LeBron? Blake Griffin was balling out all game last night against the Bucks. All game. Yeah. Man, did he have a big game. He was hustling, bringing, bringing the playoff intensity, getting the crowd involved, getting big rebounds, getting big baskets. I mean, Brooke Lopez was just fading, fading, like just letting him shoot. And he was like, okay, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to knock these down. Yeah. And that's what he was doing all game and all night. Yeah. I mean, Blake Griffin was great last night. He was great. Yeah, man, that's what you love to see. I was hyped to see Blake like that. Remind me of like of like how Blake was a little bit in his in his like later Clipper days and transitioning into Detroit days and how he developed his game so much so well. But also playing with that beast mode that we always like seen him play with when he was in his prime days with the Clippers. You know what I mean? It, it was great to see that blend that mix. It's so beautiful to watch. Um, Blake Griffin is a fun was, – was and still is a fun talent for me to watch. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Especially when he'd be turning back the clock. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I love seeing Blake Griffin play, especially at that level. Um, obviously, <laughs> um, you still have the other two-headed monster, of that three-headed monster with James Harden going down, Katie, Kyrie – they played, mm-hmm. and they showed up. Definitely Kevin Durant. He showed up big time. You know, I've seen him doing countless times in playoff situations. You know, yeah. he's just not—he can be unstoppable in a certain situation at certain moments. Hey yeah, man, K- KD, you, KD is going to be KD. You know what I mean? We all know this. He's going to get buckets regardless. And mm-hmm. it just kind of a shock to me that, but um, that obviously he got this win because of him. But also because of the small runs that he put on, those small runs that he was putting on throughout throughout the duration of the game, like you know Blake Griffin had his run, and then oh you know KD um um in the um towards the end of that third he went on his run, so it was beautiful mm-hmm. to see. Yeah, and speaking of that, because it was a it was a good um competitive game in that first half, the Bucks kind of getting back into it late in the second quarter, because mm-hmm. Nets looked like they were trying to pull away. The Bucks was able to close the gap a little bit, and uh, the Nets up by two at halftime. Yeah, and then the third quarter hit, and that was a big quarter for the Nets—a big quarter. And you mentioned those little runs, 
um, which KD was at the helm of that. Yeah. So he was leading the charge. And he was playing in foul trouble, too. Yeah. He got his fourth foul in that third quarter, convinced Steve Nash to leave him on the floor. And he went and, his run. Yeah, and it paid off. Mm-hmm. It paid off. It was risky, but it paid off. And he had a lot of buckets in that third quarter. I mean, it was playing great in that third quarter, the whole Nets team. Yeah. Um, and with the Bucks, I mean, throughout the whole game leading up to that point, they were dominating the Nets in the paint, dominating the Nets in the paint. But then in that third quarter, the Nets started stepping up defensively. Yeah. They're stepping up big time. Claxton, Kyrie, even, you know, Durant, like Blake Griffin. Yeah, which is crazy because, again, None of those plays you named were defensive play. Well, Claxton is a, yeah. is a young stud, but like, you know, none of those plays that you name are defenders. And this oh. next team is always the talk about defense, defense, defense. But when they put in effort, we can see how much they could get done. Let's just be yeah. honest about that, though. Yeah. And I mean, for the Bucks, yeah, I mean, the main two people that were really helping them out was Giannis, of course. Mm-hmm. And Brooke Lopez. I mean, yeah. they were their two best players. And the reason for that is because I mentioned that, yes, they were dominant in the paint. And that was for the main part because of those two. Yeah. Brooke Lopez is now playing more in the post in this season. And Giannis being Giannis, always going in and attacking and being aggressive in the paint. But the Bucks, which we've seen them do so well in the first round against the Heat, their three point shooting yeah. was almost certainly non-existent in this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They struggled badly from deep. Badly. And they need that. They need that. They want to keep up with this with this Nets team off, um, offensively because you want to know why. You want to talk about those runs that the Nets went on, especially late. Even though um, the Bucks was able to, like, pull out something a little bit towards the end, it was already too late. But, like, you know, they couldn't hit a three, and as a result, their their offense kind of stagnated while the Nets offense kept going. And again, their defense couldn't get nothing done um, in in that in, the, in those runs, obviously. So as a result, that that's the thing when their defense and their offense gets cold, it's it, it's you don't want to do that against the Nets. Mm, yeah, that's a that's a bad recipe. I mean, yeah, like I said, they were dominating the paint, but then once the Nets started stepping up defensively. They their three point shot was non existent, so they were just stuck. Yeah. No Brent Forbes tonight. And that's what turned the tide. Yeah. Um in this game. And even though I mean the Bucks narrowed the gap to ten in that fourth quarter, I mean the game was pretty much over midway into the fourth quarter with like five four minutes remaining. Basically, basically. The Nets just broke broke away, just broke away, and the Bucks just they just didn't again they they went on a small run, but like again, it was too late. Like, you know what I mean? It, it was just too late. The the Nets already broke this up thanks to KD, thanks to the great performance, thanks to the team just playing how they usually play all together in cohesiveness. So as a result, yeah, they were just able to take this game away before it could even end. I mean, yeah, and I mean you you mentioned that uh you might have changed the finals pick, but they just got they got this win without Harden, and they can win without Harden. Yes, yes they can. Yes they can. That's one thing for sure. Let's say this next team is too good. I, you could say loaded, not in terms of well, in terms of firepower and talent. Yeah, but like in terms of like you know, when in terms of like what they actually have, like their assets in terms of like just um, don't focus on KD and Kyrie just, and Harden. Just focus on the fact that they have. Shamit, Harris, Jeff Green didn't return yet, so we yeah, can't he didn't play in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like you know, Claxton, um, Tyler Johnson, who who could get who could get it going with his shooting when um if he gets the opportunity to play. Like you know, there's so many guys here that you you know they could give you an opportunity to spark something just for a short period of time. But that short period of time could turn in for a long period of time for the whole team at, at together. So, mm, yeah, it's just amazing. 
And with you mentioning that, I also want to give a shout out to two other Nets players that I that I forgot to mention. That was Joe Harris, mm. um, who had another great game for them, and also yeah. Mike James. Mention yes. that oh. little mention that little spark plug. He has ever since they signed him, ever since he got on the team, he's been giving them that boost, that energy, that spark plug that they needed. He's that just baby, a fun player to watch. That baby Mike Bibby. That baby Mike Bibby. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to definitely want to give a shout out to him because he really helped the Nets in this game, in this big win for game one. Beating the Bucks and jumping out to an early series lead of one nothing. All right. Uh, news, news before it begins. Predictions, news, John, news. Did you hear what's going on in Orlando? No. Who, who's focusing on Orlando right now? <laughs> well, he wasn't saying that last playoffs. Um, everything was in Orlando. Give me a bubble, second. bubble. Like I was saying, in Orlando, some moves are being made as Steve Clifford, the head coach of the Magic, has been out. He has they, him and the team has decided to part ways, and the Magic are looking to go into a new direction for their rebuild. Yeah, who do you think they should sign? As a as a as a head coach. Yep, as a head coach and mindful, they're in a the rebuild. They just got rid of um Aaron Fournier, Aaron, Aaron Gordon, and Vucevic yeah. this year, so in full rebuild mode. Yeah. Wow. Um. Is Lloyd Pierce still up? Lloyd Pierce? Yeah. Like, isn't he still? I don't I actually don't know. I think he's still with L. Is he with Atlanta? Uh, as assistant? I, they move I, him down or they just fire. I, I don't even know, to be honest. But if he if he's available, I feel like he should go with him. Because again, even though obviously they didn't get far, of course, with that Hawks team, he did build them up a little bit. He did build up their development a little bit here and there. Or let's talk about it. Kenny Atkinson. Kenny Atkinson is a perfect. Don't forget, before Brooklyn became who they became, when they were still had Karras and D'Angelo Russell and stuff, they used to always talk about how good Kenny Atkinson is in terms of being a coach who could help develop his players into, into, into becoming who they could become. Or seeing their full potential, so mm-hmm. Kenny Atkinson could also be a good fit. Um, I, I look at people will automatically think Terry Stotts, but come on now, Terry Stotts needs to be a part of a playoff team, in my opinion. He's a playoff mm-hmm. coach. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that that obviously he wouldn't be a great fit for Orlando. He would be a perfect fit for Orlando, but I'm just saying he's more for a, per, a team that is like you know trying to be in that in that playoff race or in that playoff hunt. And let's be honest, Orlando's nowhere near it. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what a rebuild is. <laughs> They're not expecting that. So yeah, so in terms of that, I, I don't, I like, I, I don't choose him, but I think they just need to go to somebody who's like, you know, who's really good at player development, in my opinion. Okay, you don't think Terry Scott is that? Terry Scott is that, yes, but I feel like he's looking for. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he's looking for more of a, like, you know, of a more tougher, as you may put it, kind of challenge. Sound like something close to like what he was doing with the Blazers. All right. That's an interesting take. We'll see what happens in Orlando. Keep an eye out on who that new head coach is going to be. Maybe they can bring them back to all. Uh, you know, Orlando that was once Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> I guess glory days of Orlando. We'll see. Get them back to their winning ways. All right. That out of the way. Okay. That out of the way. Predictions for, well, the afternoon playoff games. First, starting off the 1 o'clock ABC game one. The number five seed Atlanta Hawks come off their big win against the New York Knicks, going to Philadelphia to battle the number one seeded Philadelphia 76ers. And a, I don't know whether Embiid will be playing 
for tonight's or the next hour or so game. He probably won't, and I got I, I I would still pick the Sixers. They're still good enough to obviously get a win against this Hawks team. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I have to agree. I have to agree. Uh Trey Young, expand spirit on you. Philly's gonna take it a step further. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, just be happy that it's them and not Boston. This fan's getting out of here. <laughs> but hey, game seven. Right after that 3.30 ABC, it is game seven. That man and his Dallas Mavericks going to the Staples Center to battle the Los Angeles Clippers win or go home. Winner. Goes on to the second round to battle the number one seed, the Utah Jazz, who are waiting. Who do you have in game seven, Ja? Clippers, Mavs. As I told you before, I changed my pick. I switched up. I got the man who always has a smile on his face dominating the game. Um, He has continued to prove that he could, (laughs) let's be honest, like he could single-handedly impact the whole game while having a smile on his face. As a 22-year-old, do you know how disrespectful that is? I, I, you're right. You're right. But, listen, man, I, I, stuck, I stuck with them so far, all the way to the end. I might as well not switch up now, right? Well, well yeah. I mean, you flip-flop like three times, but, yeah, I might as well not switch up now. So, yeah, I got the Clippers. I got the Clippers winning this game, going on second round facing the Jazz. Hey, be careful now. They got home court advantage, and you know what has been happening in the series. Yes, but if they lose, I wouldn't. That, that's not gonna mean a thing. <laughs> Wait, hold on. And then you told me you was better than Braun. You better get on my face. <laughs> Embarrassing. You you think he better than Braun? All I know is one dropped 45 in the game six and the other didn't. So <laughs> I'm not saying he's that he's better, but I, listen, one's fighting another day t- today, and another one's sitting home. So all right, calm down. <laughs> well, that's what I, hey, that, I, that's what I'm saying. Don't Thanks disrespect the goat. Don't disrespect one of the goats. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. You all up, Braun. Okay, Braun. <laughs> Rudy Gobert was right there for the choosing. <laughs> Stop. Most ago, most ago. But I'm excited. Game seven. I love game sevens. Who doesn't love game sevens? Yeah. It's big time. You put everything on the line for this. Hey, man. This is it. Yeah, to, to, fight all, to fight hard, stay into it, avoid elimination. Well, this is where it could be a do or die for both teams instead of just one team within a certain period in the series, like one through six. You know what I mean? So this is the beauty of the game. This is where competitive is at is all time high. This is where the great where we see who shows up and we see who strings under pressure. Well, I mean, most of these Clippers, um, most of the Clippers on the roster been to a game seven before. Yeah, I mean, Ibaka has been to game sevens. Yeah. With Kawhi. Kawhi's been to game sevens. Paul George's been to game sevens. Rondo's been to game sevens. Yeah. Beverly uh, just last year. Um yeah. So yeah. They they know what it's about. Mavericks, I don't know if they know what it's about. Okay, yeah, they but yeah, the closest that they got was game six. And like, you know, I can understand that, but uh Outside of that, hey man, look at this this Mavericks team, they look battle tested. They look battle tested. They look yes. like they're hungry for it. They look like they don't care what situation it is. They're gonna which is obvious. If you're in a place, you should always bet bet on yourself. But I'm just saying, like this Mavericks team, the way that the, the energy that Flood Theory and playing with offensively, it's just like they're not gonna go away, yo. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm excited. Um it's time to wrap things up. Final thoughts. Was that our final thoughts or anything else you wanted to say? 
Luca Magic. Magic Kawhi Magic. <laughs> I've oh, seen Kawhi, I've seen Kawhi Magic on multiple occasions. Okay, okay, okay. Well, all I gotta say is, in terms of his Clipper career, um, your boy, your boy PG better better show a big time. <laughs> yeah, but I have faith in those two guys as you saw as well. Yeah, Rondo, Kawhi, and said. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. I'm just ready. Let's get it. I'm just ready. Enough talk. Everyone enjoy the games for today, the Hawks, the Sixers, and of course the game seven in Staples Center. And we'll be watching it and enjoying it as well. Ready to talk about it in tomorrow's podcast. That being said, thank you guys for watching today's podcast. Make sure to tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, support the channel, give us feedback, all that good stuff. And also follow our IG and our TikTok down in the description below. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, I'm Evan. I'm Ja. This is mine and basketball podcast. Playoff edition. Playoff edition. Luca Magic, baby. <laughs> Kawhi, don't let us down. Clippers, don't let us down. Don't let your fans down. You did it for like 30 years now. Yeah, well, hey, man, the curse is going to just continue. <laughs> We'll see. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.